On this episode, we talk about Mark 7 DSG tunes, squealing noise on startup on a TSI engine, DSG drivability concerns, and Mark 7 DSG flashes. This is episode 27 of the ASDAP show. Let's get into the show. Zach T via email says, Hi, love the show, really helpful and great knowledge. I have a 2010 Mark 6 GTI with a TSI CBFA engine. The car is currently APR tuned. I put the car away for a few months for the winter weather. The other day, it was nice and I decided to take it out for a car wash. When I started the vehicle and the secondary air pump kicks on, I'm hearing almost like a belt-like squeal and I'm not coming from the passenger side of the vehicle, it's on the driver's side goes away right after the secondary air pump cycles off. No check engine light and the car still drives fine. Could this be a bad secondary air pump or just from cold weather and condensation possibly? Any information is appreciated. Thanks. Okay, so Zach, the uh, CBFA, for anybody who's not familiar, some two liter TSIs have secondary air injection, some of them do not. Uh, the noise you're describing, if it is indeed coming from a secondary air pump, it could be a result of like condensation or something or water getting in there. Sometimes what will happen is the combination valve uh, will get stuck open, allow some of the exhaust to come back through, and obviously a byproduct of the exhaust uh, in many cars is actually water. So that water will then get forced back into the secondary air system and end up in the pump. Um, best thing to do probably would be to take the pump off the vehicle, determine if you do have water in there. If you do, you can obviously dump that out, see if the noise goes away. But I would start by trying to make sure that it's definitely from there. If, it, if the noise goes away as soon as the secondary air pump turns off, then you, you can be pretty certain that it is related to that. If not though, it could be PCV related. Um, and it might even be PCV related anyway, just because uh, when secondary air is on, the idle tends to be higher. So maybe at that specific idle that uh, it's at such a pitch that you hear the PCV valve. Um, and so that could be it because PCV valves make some pretty uh, squealy noises when they fail to. Carl S. via Facebook. Carl S. via Facebook says, Paul, your videos are amazing. I'm not sure where to go to ask you a question for the show, but I'd love to know if there's a way to disable or raise the torque limiter for the DSG so it no longer cuts power while long. Okay, so Carl, the Mark 7 uh, DSG transmission does have torque limiting on it to uh, obviously keep everything in line. Well, I reached out to, to some tuning experts because obviously we are not, we don't actually do this software tuning of the vehicles. We, uh, we perform software tunes, but we don't actually develop the software for the vehicles. Uh, what they told me was that a couple things. First of all, um, they haven't gone into working on uh, changing how aggressive the launch control is. Um, but if you were to start from, let's say a roll and then just roll into it, you're going to get a more aggressive um, uh, power uh, initiation or how, how it rolls into the power is much more aggressive as opposed to launch control is intended uh, to be a little bit smoother as you go. Probably because violent launching isn't really conducive for traction. That's probably a big part of why uh, launch control is programmed like that. But the other thing they mentioned is you're talking about raising the torque limiter on the DSG trans and um, what I was told was that it's very likely that if you raise the torque too much on there, you can probably compromise the clutch packs inside the transmission. So keep in mind, this is just like anything else with modding your car. You know, you may get what you ask for and then regret it because you know there's a balance between performance and reliability. Um, and so maximum performance is going to be not maximum reliability. And since it's probably a street car, I assume since it's a Mark 7, it is that you're gonna to wanna to try to find that balance. So a DSG tune might be a good option for you. Um, we have the Uniconnect cables from Unitronic that um, gives you the ability to flash your vehicle at home. Um, if that is the case, uh, we'll put a link to the Uniconnect cable. You can obviously do uh, software for the ECM as well as the transmission on that vehicle. Zone one via VW Vortex says, 
Paul, have you had any experience with aftermarket intercoolers on Mark 7 GTIs with the driver's assistant package? Or are you aware of how to successfully remove the DAP without having a fault code pop up? I live in the southwest and it gets pretty hot, so I was considering a forged twin cooler, but when I purchased my GTI, I could only find it with the driver's assist package. Okay, so uh, installing an intercooler on a vehicle with driver's assistance package. So if anybody's not familiar, those packages are uh, vehicles, they have a radar sensor in the front of the vehicle um, for that function. Now, my advice would be to not try to remove that. Removing that is uh, kind of pointless. It's an expensive system that's you know intended to function on the vehicle. Um, if and more importantly, uh, a lot of those uh, piggyback intercoolers, the dual intercoolers, are not really the most efficient setup. Uh, you're probably going to save a little bit of money because they are a little bit less expensive, but your net result to get the best result is going to be uh, the sandwich style or the replacement intercooler, which we have a DIY that we did um, on how to install that. We have a couple intercooler options that we'll link up uh, as well. But using that style, I would say you're probably going to give yourself a lot more headaches to save a little bit of money that you'll probably have to get help from somebody and pay them labor to try to figure out how to get rid of any error lights and all that other stuff. And so it'll probably wash out in the end and you're going to be removing a system from the vehicle that functions fine. So if you went to the, one of the other style intercoolers that actually replaces the factory one, you wouldn't have to worry about that uh, driver's assistance package stuff at all. Nick D via email says, I just got a certified pre-owned 2013 GLI. I've noticed a weird problem with the brakes where they seem to take a while to disengage after letting your foot off the pedal. It usually happens within the first 30 minutes of driving. At a red light, when I release the pedal, the car will not move and it feels like the brakes are still engaged. I don't give the car any gas until it starts moving on its own. It normally takes 2-3 to three seconds for the car to just start rolling, when it does happen. I called my dealer and they said it's just the DSG transmission trying to get into first gear and it's normal. What is your opinion on the issue? Do you think that's my brakes or my transmission? Would it be considered normal for that year GLI? So Nick, the problem you're talking about or the, the uh, concern that you're talking about sounds like to me it might be two things. Uh, a lot of VW vehicles, and I'm not sure if that specific one has this, but there's a system called auto hold. Uh, what auto hold does is when you press on the brakes and you come to a stop, it will hold the vehicle in place until you hit the gas to go and then it will then go. That is a system that most people are not familiar with, so if you, that could be part of your problem. Now, the other component I would say is if you're not familiar with DSG transmissions, that's probably the other parts. So the fact that you're saying they don't disengage while you're driving. Uh, DSG transmissions are a lot different than other automatics because they actually are a mechanical transmission as opposed to a standard uh, automatic transmission is engineering wise and physically they're significantly different. Uh, we'll put a link to, uh, to a DSG video about how they work and everything uh, with our, our friend, uh, the Hummel Mechanic and Engineer Explain. They did a pretty good video talking about that. Um, if you're having that issue, I would say it's probably transmission drag as you're slowing down, but also it's pretty common for the DSG transmission on startup before it's going from a stop to first gear to take a second to kind of engage depending on the variation of the acceleration you're going for. On, on real light, um, light uh, acceleration, it usually will take a second for some DSG transmission. So most likely everything you're describing is not even remotely related to the brakes. It's probably transmission related um, and it doesn't sound like an actual problem. Thank you for watching episode 27 of the Ask Dap Show. If you have anything to add to the questions we answer on this show or think we missed something, be sure to leave it in the comments below. To have a question answered on a show just like this one, shoot us an email, info at shopdap.com.